This video starts at a slightly different angle from normal because the device we're looking at here is a Wildwood Pendulum. I brought this back from America a very, very long time ago. It was sold in a gadget shop and it is electronic. It will keep going for as long as the battery can maintain operation. But it is fundamentally one of those chaotic pendulums, but with a kicker coil underneath. So now you've seen an operation doing its chaotic patterns, let's open it and take a look inside. So one of the most distinctive things about this is that it's made of wood, and it looks as though a lot of hand assembly has been involved. I'm not sure the full history of this, but... Uh, it's got the wooden base and the angular stem and the top, and underneath that is a magnet with a little metal plate over the front of it. And the pendulum itself is also turned from wood, and it's got a ceramic magnet in the bottom. Then this clear plastic stem is glued in, and it's capped with a custom cap with a spike in the top. And the spike sticks onto that magnet, and it provides a low wear and low friction, um, basically a pivot for the operation. Now, the way this works, well, I can show you. We'll open it up. We'll just do that right now. We'll just cut straight to the chase. The battery is changed by lifting this end of the felt up, and that reveals a PP3 battery. In this case, it's a... Uh, lithium core PP3 battery with a little boost circuit. And there's a magnet here for the plate that covers the battery compartment. So it closes together quite decisively. But if we go further, oh, this is what I don't like doing because this is not replaceable. If we go a bit further and take this off completely, uh, we reveal I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to refocus on this. Let me. Let me just do that right now. Focus. Did it focus? I think it focused. So we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five magnets, and these are the ones that, uh, as the pendulum comes in, it's bouncing around those. It's trying to find a path through the middle of them, and when it finally does, there is an air cord coil. Now, this is why there's so much circuitry around this. There is a lot of circuitry. This is weird. It's the fact it's air cord instead of the usual approach of having a steel core and just a single transistor. Uh, quite odd. It lets them be very low profile, I guess. Okay, well, tell you what then. I'm going to um, unglue this and uh, try and get it out in some way and then reverse engineer the circuitry. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore very interesting circuitry and entirely hand assembled. It's got one single coil uh, of very fine wire, about 500 meters of fine wire and a entirely hand-assembled circuit that is smothered in glue to hold everything in place. And one thing that caught me out initially, I thought there might have been two windings in the coil because there's the super fine one, but then there's also signs of heavier windings. But these are actually just being used to lace the wires together during manufacture before soldering. Absolutely no way they could have mass-produced this. This may have been an early model. Uh, I don't know if they switched to a circuit board later on, but this is very much in the category of handmade art. This was made in uh, Eugene, Oregon, uh, in America by Andrews Manufacturing Co. Right, tell you what, let's take a look at the schematic. And to do this justice, I shall focus a bit closer to the schematic. Like this. Okay, now I want to say that if you have one of these devices, if you have a Wildwood, an original pendulum, treasure it. Treat it as being an art piece because it really is. Especially, the circuitry is very much unique to this unit. I've never seen pendulum circuitry like this before. So before I explain this, I'm going to have to explain there are three transistors. There's an NPN transistor, which switches to the negative rail, and you have to take its base positive to actually turn it on. And there are two PNP, two different PNP transistors, that are going to the positive rail, and you have to take their base negative to turn them on. So in its standby state... With the coil not being energised, this transistor is turned off. 
And these uh, transistors here are effectively held off by the fact that this coil, in its unenergized state, is referencing to the positive rail. And normally this transistor, which is used to turn this transistor on, is slightly biased to the negative rail with this 10 mega ohm resistor. Um, but it's held off by the fact that because this is uh, to the positive rail, there's effectively a resistor and a diode here that are effectively pulling up to the positive rail. So that transistor is held off. Likewise, this one is held off. But more than that, uh, this capacitor between the emitter and the base of that PNP transistor uh, is held in a discharge state. This coil, again, provides a route back for the current that it hold, uh, takes this up close to the sort of positive rail. Now, when the magnet swings by, it induces a voltage in this coil, which is negative, and that counteracts the uh, 9 volt supply there and now because it's gone negative the uh, positive that was holding this transistor off is taken away and now this transistor turns on via this resistor but it turns on very gently which is good because there's a straight path through this transistor to the base of this transistor from the 9 volt battery which is a bit strange but that then turns this transistor on and in doing so it then makes that negative there which energizes the coil at about five milliamps current and that also takes that initial magnet uh, influence that turned these transistors on and it holds it but this transistor hasn't turned on yet so that now provides the solid negative here so this transistor's turning on keeping that turned on but now the current flows through this resistor and charges this capacitor up negative with respect to the 9 volt rail and when it reaches the threshold that this transistor turns on this transistor turns that transistor off which turns that transistor off and the circuit resets so what that means is that for every swing of the magnet past that coil because of this timed circuit you're going to get one distinctive 5 milliamp pulse through that coil, just one pulse, and the standby quiescent current of the circuit is virtually negligible. It has truly been designed in the style of a perfect perpetual motion type ornament. Uh, the battery is going to last a long time in that. Um, there is also that diode across the coil to protect the transistor, which is unusual. But then this is quite a complex circuit with the three transistors. It can't self-start like the uh, classic solar pendulums, but that's fine. It means that you can just hold the pendulum in the middle and it will stop swinging. So that is it. I mean, I say that is it. There's, it's more than it. It's like an immense little thing. It is a surprisingly complex bit of circuitry. I was not expecting that. And there is a plastic clone that came out of this later on. One moment, I'll just go and grab that. And the plastic clone was called The Visitor. I mean, okay, it's styled in a different way, but it still is the same principle. But the circuitry is massively simpler. You may hear a slight clicking. There's little read relays in here that, and a battery so that the LEDs flash in the outside. But this one uses a 9 volt battery again, but it just uses the coil and transistor and approach. That is it. It's super simple. So therefore, probably not going to have as long a battery life. Let me go and grab the Wildwood again. Here we go. This one is made in America by hand and it is art. And this is made in China by machine and it is not art. This is a mass produced product. Still a nice product, but uh, not as good as this one because this has that true art aspect. So if you have one of these, do value it. Also, you can uh, put a little dab of Vaseline apparently in the end of this to prevent wear because uh, ultimately it is, it is designed to swing for absolutely massive lengths of time. You could theoretically stick a little solar panel on this, but then it wouldn't self-start. But there we have it, the uh, Wildwood Pendulum. It's a, a ridiculously amazing piece of handmade art. There's a lot of work in that. That circuitry there would have taken a long time to make each one. I wonder how many of these they made. I wonder if they did refine the design later on. But that's it. Uh, it's interesting. I'm going to value this a lot more now that I know what's in it because it's very, very neat indeed.